Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak on this, the first reading of the Dairy Industry Restructuring Amendment Bill No. 2. New Zealand First is proud to support this fine member's bill. And we commend the Honourable Damien O'Connor for introducing it to the ballots and congratulate him on having it drawn. Mr. Speaker, this bill has come about because of the Dairy Industry Restructuring Amendment Bill, which was passed by this House last year. We spoke against that bill, Mr. Speaker. We voted against it. New Zealand First voted against the Dairy Bill because of the possible ramifications uh, that we could see it having for New Zealand's dairy industry. Without wanting to relitigate that Act, the entire process of that Act, we are happy to support Mr O'Connor's bill. Indeed, we are grateful for the opportunity to support it because we see it as having the potential to circumvent some of the worst possible effects, the most deleterious effects which the Dairy Act could potentially see visited upon the dairy industry. The concerns we hold are essentially the same as those which Mr O'Connor holds, and they are chiefly centred on the Trading Among Farmers scheme, the TAF scheme, which is one of the major planks, if not the major plank, of the Dairy Act. The TAF allows for the formation of what is somewhat euphemistically called the New Co-op Fund. The name New Co-op Fund gives the impression, Mr Speaker, that it is a fund owned and controlled by the Co-op, by the farmer shareholders uh, who comprise and own Fonterra. The name gives that impression. In reality, however, Mr Speaker, it is anything but. In fact, it is almost the polar opposite of that. The New Co-op Fund is the fund into which existing Fonterra shares may be transferred, into which farmer shareholders may sell their shares in the cooperative, which is Fonterra, so that external investors and speculators may trade in them and may receive dividends from them. External investors do not buy the shares themselves, of course. They buy the unit securities which are attached to each share, and they buy the dividend income stream which would normally be associated with the share. But the trade in the unit securities will dictate the value of all shares in the co-op, which in turn will affect the relative ease, or not, with which uh, new suppliers may enter the cooperative and may provide additional incentive for some farmers wishing to cash up their shares and exit the co-op. This in turn will create further fiscal pressure on the company and its farmer shareholder owners. In either event, Mr Speaker, the TAF scheme will allow for the redirection of dividend stream revenue away from Fonterra's New Zealand resident owners to offshore speculators and other foreign carpet baggers. Indeed, the first tender of Fonterra unit securities was oversubscribed, and already more than 40 per cent of units have gone to overseas buyers. We do not think this is a good thing, Mr Speaker. New Zealand First does not want to see Fonterra's profits disappear overseas. We want to see them retained in New Zealand by the fine, hard-working private business people who are the farmers who created the company. Mr Ardern asks, do we, the Parliament, trust the farmers of New Zealand? Well, personally, yes, I do, if they have all the information. We do not believe that if Fonterra's farmer shareholders had had all the relevant information to hand and sufficient time to digest the TAF scheme, to fully grasp and understand the potential ramifications of it, that they would have voted in favour of it. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First believes that had the time given for the Select Committee to examine the bill not been truncated down from six months to four weeks, three weeks of which Parliament was in recess for, Fonterra's shareholders would have had sufficient time, as well as, as all the relevant information, much of which was only provided at the last minute, to see the scheme for what it is, and they would have voted it down. But that did not happen, and the DERA bill, with its TAF scheme, is the result. Fonterra claims that it has no plans to build a shareholder fund which is any larger than around 10 to 15 per cent of the total number of shares in the co-op. But there is no provision in the Act to prevent the shareholder fund from growing larger than that, Mr Speaker. There is currently no protection against the size of the fund growing to any level at all, up to and including 100 per cent, other than the provisions contained within Fonterra's constitution, which can be changed by a 75 per cent majority vote of shares held. And this is an important distinction because shares held and individual shareholders are not the same thing. Mr O'Connor's bill seeks to insert a measure of protection for Fonterra and its shareholders into legislation where currently there is none. It is a stopgap measure. It is a handbrake on the drive to divest New Zealand of its dairy industry, and it will give some protection until a change of government is able to reverse the folly which was and is the DERA Act. New Zealand First congratulates Mr O'Connor for bringing this bill to the House. We commend it to the House, and we are proud to support it. Thank you. Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to speak to the dairy.